During World War II, thousands of African Americans migrated from southern farms to fill jobs in northern and western factories. There have been two great migrations of African American population within the United States. The first began shortly before World War I and continued through the war. And as with World War II, it was partly pull, partly the uh, attraction of the North, of cities, of industrial jobs, of the opportunity to live in communities where they would not be controlled by white people. Job opportunities did exist in the North, but in the 1940s, so did discrimination. Tired of feeling like second-class citizens when they were doing the same jobs as whites, African Americans gravitated toward black activists like A. Philip Randolph, the founder and president of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, the first black labor union. We wanted to ensure that in this war, as unlike the previous war, African Americans would have an opportunity to work in war plants and would profit from the war in the same way that white people did. As one of the most outspoken and influential figures in the black community, Randolph threatened to organize a massive march of 100,000 demonstrators on Washington in the summer of 1941. But the fear of violence and backlash in southern states persuaded President Franklin Roosevelt to make a compromise with Randolph. And they basically made a deal. He'd call off the march and Roosevelt would create a Fair Employment Practices Commission to ensure that African Americans would have access to defense jobs. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 8808, establishing the commission in June of 1941. It barred discrimination in the defense industry and set up a committee to investigate complaints filed by those who believed they'd been discriminated against. And the FEPC had some effect, and African Americans did better in World War II in getting jobs than they did in World War I, but it certainly didn't wipe away all of the barriers that kept black men and women out of, out of these jobs. In spite of improvements, mounting tensions between whites and blacks at times erupted into violence. Some of the worst episodes were in June of 1943, when black and white mobs fought on the streets of Detroit, leaving 34 people dead, most of them black. But even though discrimination and violence remained, the promise of better jobs continued to lure African Americans to northern cities. And soon, the battle for civil rights became a national issue that could no longer be ignored. <laughs>